Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Adventures in Small Business. Uh, this, is a, this broadcast is a collaboration between the U.S. Small Business Administration, the Hawaii Small Business Development Centers, the uh, Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific. Uh, this series showcases stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses, and builds awareness of the resources available to small businesses. So today we have uh, Jenna Davis. Uh, she is the owner of Raw Love Sunscreen, LLC, and is gonna share her journey to success. Uh, I'm Wayne Wong, I'm the Maui Center Director for the Hawaii SBDC. So Jenna, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, hi. Great, hi. So uh, let's start off by just introducing yourself. You know, tell me a little bit about your background and then also uh, introduce your company and the product that you have. Absolutely. So I started this company in 2015. It's called Raw Love Sunscreen. And we are a reef safe SPF 35 all natural mineral sunscreen. Um, we are one of the first FDA approved sunscreens out of Hawaii. Nice. And um, I started this journey uh, with the background of marine biology and chemistry and, you know, being a fair-skinned girl for the love of Hawaii, I, need, I like to be outside, but I also um, needed to protect my skin. So uh, I started this company knowing that certain ingredients in sunscreen are harming the coral reef, mm -hmm. um, and that's been brought to light recently because of the bill that just passed. Right. Um, and so I wanted to create a product that was free of toxic chemicals, free of parabens, um, preservatives, and I also wanted to stand by my value of having something that was plastic free. Right. So um, that is how Rella was born. And yeah, it's reef safe, water resistant, um, we're plant based and cruelty free. So mm -hmm. no testing on the animals. Oh well, great. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that, you know, I really love about working with you as your SBDC advisor mm -hmm. is that, you know, you came into this with a need which started as your own need, but you, you know, you quickly figured out there's a lot of people that have this need. Um, and the core fundamental of a business is that you are providing um, a solution to people's needs and hence that makes them want to compensate you, right? Yeah. So the fact that you had a need as opposed to thinking, hey, there's this really big opportunity, I'm just going to try to capitalize on that. You know, you actually, I think, started your business the right way, which is figuring out a need and how is the best way to, to, to treat with that. So talk a little bit about um, how you sort of arrived at your product, you know, the iterations you had to go through and so on. Yeah, so um, in 2015, there was a massive coral bleaching event that happened worldwide, and I've been um, teaching uh, scuba on boats here in Maui and also in Oahu before that, and I remember going underwater and seeing the coral was bleached, and it was white, and it was dying, and um, I knew that sunscreens were part of the problem. Now, it's not just sunscreen, it's the temperature rising, it's pollution, it's runoff, it's all these things, but I knew I wasn't going to add to those problems, so um, I got in my kitchen and, you know, used my chemistry background and my marine biology and my knowledge of natural products right. and, you know, made a batch for myself. and brought it on the boat and people were like, what is that? And my neighbors are all uh, semi-pro surfers at the time and they were, you know, interested in it and I was like, they, you know, people wanted it. I was like, okay, well, it was expensive, so you have to buy it. And they were like, okay, cool. So, um, and it was a hit between my group, my, my friend circle and at work that I, uh, I was like, maybe, maybe I have a thing here. Uh, and I started doing the farmer's markets, and um, I knew that I couldn't just show up, you know, with, with the glass mason jar of sunscreen. So I drew a logo and got some business cards and just got out there and started talking to people, and people loved it. They kept yeah. coming back to me, and, um, I, you know, I had no idea that this is going to be my everything now. Yeah. So, and, um, and what's really great is, again, from a 
foundational business principle, you mm -hmm. know, you you know you turn your kitchen into a lab, but yeah. you didn't just sort of sit in there and say this is what's going to be best for the customer. Right? right you actually right. went out, talked to people. You had various people use it. Mm -hmm. That's that's really awesome. And it changed too. I mean, my yeah. formula from day one. You know, it, what I had thought it was great. I know bringing on the boat. I know that um, one thing it was important for us people who work. Uh, in the water was that our masks didn't fall down our face. Right. Um, for the, uh, people that sweat a lot, they wanted something that stayed on their face. Um, the smell, you know, we wanted something that smelled good. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first thing people do is smell it. Um, and then also the science part of it, you know, wanted to make sure they didn't have any ingredients that were harmful to us or the environment. So um, I evolved over time with with everything, but the actual product was getting in front of the people and asking, what do you want? What, what, what would be great for you? And then, you know, people said, oh, I don't want the glass mason jars. We would really like it um, in a tin, and we'd like smaller sizes, and so. Um, and no plastic. And no plastic, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, people are always saying, why don't you have a pump? And, or, I mean, why don't you have a, a squeeze bottle? And I said, well, I haven't found an eco-friendly way. We have a great formula um, that we have on the boats, even. We have a, a little bit uh, less beeswax and more coconut oil and goes on the boats free for guests but I don't offer those for individual sales because we don't want to use plastic right and so right. Um, and my goal is never to make uh, you know profit over over integrity right. so um, the tins are working great and yeah. you know yeah. check them in your pocket it's wonderful yeah, yeah. So, very good mm -hmm. yeah so you had already mentioned the recent legislation, and, and for the audience, I thought I'd, I'd explain that, you know, Governor Ige signed SB 2571 Act 104 on July 3rd of this year, and hey. it prohibits, mm -hmm. prohibits the sale, the offer of sale and distribution of any sunscreens that contain the chemicals oxybenzone and octi, octanoxate. That's good, yeah. <laughs> right. um, and so, this is great news and timing for you because obviously that makes much more awareness that you know we should be looking for products that don't contain those chemicals. Um, but in a in an interesting way, it also creates a frenzy of competition for you, right? And so, so talk a little bit about sunscreens in general and how you've, in a sense took the right path, or if, if that's the right word for it, compared to a lot of the other products that have been rushed to market and, and we're starting to see now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I started this uh, company ha having no idea that it might come to a bill. I mean, that's like my my dream, you know? Right. Um, and, I, you know, when I found out that it was coming forward, I was definitely part of that, um, trying to push awareness and education and uh, as I go into stores now, a lot of times, um, and I just got back from the mainland, um, they're, they're telling me, oh, we have sunscreen already. Um, and a lot of the larger companies are switching over to mineral sunscreens. And I just have to stand by my values and, and say that we are the most eco-conscious product on the market. Um, we are based out of Hawaii, and I pay my taxes here. And exactly. um, I'm not, when I, you know, you're meeting the owner, and it's a one-woman show, and you're supporting a local business, trying to help the environment and trying to help her community, and also supporting Hawaii's economy. Right. Um, and I think that that's what makes us stand out. Um, we're also one of the only FDA-approved sunscreen companies, um, and there's others that have been popping up, which is so great. I love to see more companies taking the path or to to rise up. Um, so, so let's dig into that a little bit deeper because I think that's one of the major differentiations, at least at this stage, right. which is, and, and again, the audience might not realize, but the FDA considers sunscreen a drug. It's mm -hmm. an OTC or over-the-counter drug, a drug that you can obtain without prescription. Mm -hmm. But with that, because of that, uh, anyone who sells it in any of the major retail outlets, you know, they have to get FDA... Uh, sort of oversight and certification and that involves you know SPF testing how do you know that you're getting that degree of sun protection mm -hmm. um, there's good manufacturing practices which includes inspections by the FDA of the lab mm -hmm. uh, and then labeling under a mumbo-jumbo of 
21 CFR 201. Yeah. And so there's the drug facts labeling that needs to be on that because, because uh, basically because sunscreen makes a drug claim and that claim is to help prevent sunburn and decrease the risk of skin cancer, it's considered a drug and hence to be sold in any of the major retailers of which that was one of the things that you discovered in your research and some of the things that you've done and right now at this stage um, you are one of the only ones of the manufacturers in Hawaii based mm -hmm. that that is FDA certified. Yeah, it was definitely a journey. Um, I actually got approached by Whole Foods a year and a half ago, and they were like, we'd love to carry your product. And then I got an FDA attorney who then kind of rocked my world and was like, great, so you have been making this in your kitchen, and that's wonderful. And I was like, well, I'm making it in a commercial kitchen now. And they're like, great, that doesn't count. Um, so <laughs> there, you know, you have to be made in a, in a lab, and there are none in Hawaii. Um, right. So being a made in Hawaii product was it's impossible right now to be FDA approved and that it's, it's a tough thing, you know, because you want to be a made in Maui product or even be made in Hawaii product. Um, but we worked really hard and uh, took out loans and got the testing done and were made in the lab. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy when you pick up 10,000 sunscreens made in the lab <laughs> that are all tested, regulated and ready to go into Whole Foods. Um, and which we are, we're, we're going on shelves right. to Whole Foods, which is, was kind of my goal. I was like, okay, well, where in Hawaii is, you know, the, the big retail store that stands by um, using organic products and whatnot, and, uh, you know, that I can get the word out there to everybody, most importantly. Right. And, uh, yeah, we did it, and it, it's, it's happening. We're going on shelves next week, and it was a process. Um, right. Right. But well worth it, well worth right. it. You know, I am confident now with my product, and, you know, I know that I have a product that's tested and approved, and it, it takes a brick off your shoulder. Right. You know, it, right. it really does. You know that you're, you know, the cakey are going to be protected, right. and you know, right. perfect their skin and whatnot. So. All right. So at this point, we're going to take a break, and uh, and we'll see you back here in about a minute. Hello. My name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pomai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. Aloha, I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. Today we're talking to Jenna Davis, who owns Raw Love Sunscreen, LLC, and we're learning what it takes to be a small business and the resources available that helped her be successful as she is today. Um, so I remember back in early 2016, you coming into the office, and at that stage you were still very much in product development. You were doing, uh, uh, swap meets and a lot of sales to friends and families. You were just starting to get uh, some deals with snorkeling boats mm -hmm. who were going to carry your product because they wanted a reef safe product. Um, so talk a little bit about how the SBDC has helped you in your journey. Yeah, absolutely. Um it's been really great, you know, I am not, I don't have a business background, I have a chemistry background, a marine biology background, a science, uh, artsy person who's great at talking to people. Right. Um, and so I changed my hobby, and really making sunscreen was a hobby for me, and sharing my passion and love into a business. And I had tried looking online and Googling things, and it was just, it was terminology that it didn't make sense to me. Right. Um, and so when I came in there, I, I really, 
I needed help from, I was like a business one on one real quick, you know, I, I needed to know how to make this hobby into a business. So, and you guys have been really helpful for that. Um, whether it be changing it, you know, I started off as a sole proprietorship and then um, we went and talked about how to, to, for tax purposes and how to kind of set things up so that I was legal and um, also supporting um, the economy and yeah, it was just, it was a lot. So it was really great to come in and give terms that I understood right. where you literally sat in front of me and were like, this is this and this is what you need to do. And right. I think it took me a couple times to um, say what, uh, what was that? And it was really helpful. Um, and along the journey, you know, when I was ready to change uh, from that to an LLC um, and ready for some press releases, it's been really helpful just to have um, like a, like a business uh, business parent, you know, so I want to come in to you. <laughs> we need to start putting that on our advertising, you know, SBDC business parent. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I don't know what to do. Help me. And um, it's, it's just been nice to have someone there to kind of guide you and, and right. lead you. Right. Yeah. So we had talked about this being a process. And, you know, again, at least you had been working on it. And then when I finally met you, that was in early 2016. And Fast forward, things are still evolving and everything else here in 2018. So why don't you talk a little bit about different things evolving, like how your, even your imagery and, and what your logo looks like and, and how that's progressed through the years. Yeah, so um, actually I brought this here. So my image has started from, you know, I, I drew it with a Sharpie and we went from uh, that to black and white label to I think this one and then we tried different sizes and now we have this beautiful logo and a back label which is all FDA approved FDA. and um, it's been a cool journey you know so that's been one part of it um, our labels on our tins you know we changed from uh, small tins to large tins you know and now we have um, the two sizes a two ounce and a four ounce right. and um, it's been a fun journey to grow and just fine-tune everything nice um, yeah. even our packaging you know yeah. I, I have eco-friendly biodegradable packaging that that's another part of it of, of, of growing and evolving and and standing by my values right mm -hmm. so I want to talk to you a little bit now about your process and and sort of how you deal with things and so I'm gonna show a picture here <laughs> I don't know how well you can see this but but Essentially, <laughs> tell us what this picture is. Uh, so that is like eight in the morning. I mean, <laughs> um, coming home from my trip, I hadn't been home for more than a few hours and I went right to my whiteboard and I find it so important to make lists and goals um, because if you don't set goals, it's hard to stay focused. And right. um, so I have a big calendar on my desk and that has, um, you know, my month goals are right on there. And I have my long list and, you know, I go and buy cute ones and make me excited about it. And, and that has my daily goals. And every day I'm crossing them off and I'll turn to the next one. And that is my whiteboard of raw love goals. And that, some of those goals stayed on there for, you know, almost a year. I was just so, noticing, I mean, this was quite a ways back and I noticed it says on there, change to LLC. Yeah. And then loan in capital letters <laughs> with an exclamation point. Yeah, loan with like exclamation mark and question marks like, uh, uh, you know, I knew that I needed to get money somehow. Right. And I did it, I, I took me time, I had to save up money, pay off debt, get my credit where it needs to be. Um, and that takes time. And right. you know, once I did that, I took out a small yep. business loan um, and did it in in the way that uh, any entrepreneur can do. Yeah. And and I remember having that discussion because when you're talking about financing, even just the early broad strokes of do I go to a lender or do I get an investor, right? Mm -hmm, and what mm -hmm. does that mean? And it's and scary. I think that helped you make uh, a decision that you would rather go with a lender and have better control than if you had an investor that was maybe not having the same priorities. Absolutely, as you. it's yeah. still my baby, and I, I really, I want to take care of it and right. watch it grow, right. and um, want to have full control at the moment. And you know, as it grows bigger, you know, 
we'll have to have another meeting. <laughs> we do. <laughs> um, you know, what the next steps will be for that right. because, you know, it, it grows with anything. Right. So, so, um, so how would you define success? I mean, you're, you're really getting a lot of traction with your product. The legislation is excellent timing, you know, maybe a double-edged sword, but excellent timing for mm -hmm, your product. Mm -hmm. um, so do you feel, with all the successes that you've already had, you know, what, what does success mean for you? It's a good question. Um, for me, success would be to raise education and awareness. Um, that's really what I've dedicated my life to. Um, I've done a lot of ocean conservation and yeah. worked in aquariums. and. Yeah. Um, to have people be aware and make a conscious decision of the products that they choose to purchase, um, whether it be what's in the product itself or the packaging that it's in. Right. Um, that is, is my success. Um, yeah, making a money is, is part of it. You know, you need to, it's expensive to live here and to not only have a passion, but also make it your business yeah. is the ultimate goal and I'm doing it and you know every day is a challenge and uh, with growth but um, I'm happy every day I wake up happy and I'm you know able to share my love and passion and, and make a future of it yeah. too. So, so speaking of challenges what are the next challenges or what's next for you? Oh uh, yeah so I guess the challenges um, I just got back from the mainland and there's a lot of competition out there um, and I don't want to be seen as competition I'd rather see it as um, give consumers the option um, and so uh, Growing and finding the next step of okay. I'm a small business going into a little bit of a bigger business <laughs> and um, figuring out how I can um, Stand out from the rest stand by my values um, you know, I, I really would like to be more of a sustainable company. And so I vision when you go into a store, you see raw love sunscreen on a, on a shelf and a little wooden shelf and on it maybe has some reusable straws and some um, reusable cups and things of that nature. Yep. So product and, expansion. Yeah, and yeah. branding too, you know. Yeah. Um, I haven't done a lot of marketing, um, but that's something that is challenging to me is to figure out how to use my resources. Um, in a beneficial way, sure. Um, and which way to grow um, organically, and yeah, it's so. It's, I, so we talked about a goal board, yes. But you also have a dream board, ah, yes. Right, and much of that <laughs> is visual. So yeah, yeah. How are you doing on that? Oh, it changes often. I'll, sometimes I'll <laughs> my dreams change. So I'm like, oh, we'll take that off. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, my my goal is to live by the ocean and. Uh, you know, travel and raise awareness and um, yeah, I just want to live by the beach with a pool. Yeah. That's like my ultimate goal <laughs> and be happy and, and right. you know, I think it's, with any goal, I think that um, we can all achieve whatever it is that we want. You know, if we yeah. put our mind to something and write goals and really work hard to achieve those goals, we can accomplish whatever it is that you know we we may want so right. um, you just have to put the work toward towards right. it and you have to take risks right. um, you know I remember the day that I decided uh, I'm not gonna you know, I got laid off from diving so much I was getting injured and uh, I, I had another job lined up and I said nope I'm not gonna go I am I'm gonna start my business you know and that was scary but we have to take risks in order to achieve our goals right and um, same with our dreams you yeah. know and I think that's the role that SBDC plays, right? I mean, we yeah. we are there to enable you, right? You, Absolutely. You are the one that has to do the work. Absolutely. But certainly yeah. having guidance, having somebody uh, evaluate, like, where's the priorities? Right. And I remember one of the big things that we talked about was making sure, sure, there's a lot of tasks to do, but it's working on your business, not just working in your business. and, and the tediousness of that. Absolutely, and there's so much different parts to running a business. You know, your website, um, marketing tools, um, your product, you have to make sure your product is ready to go. Uh, right. Boxes, uh, going into the store, that, that's a lot of my time is um, just going in and talking to people and trying to get into stores right. and um, tour boats and 
the best word of the best thing is word of mouth. So um, that's been really great, just you know, meeting the community, and that's something that I would like to do more of is, is doing more outreach, whether it be um, with the kids and right. doing more beach cleanups and um, really reaching out to our community right. and say, I'm here, I have a product that's great for you in the environment, and it smells great and it yeah. feels good, and you know. And and how great is the validation? You told me a story about how you know with the onset of more competitors coming on you've had certain customers switch yeah and, and when you looked at those products you you sort of cautioned them that you don't think all of the claims that they had were really true and so on and so forth and as a confirmation many of those customers have come back to you saying you were right that it's not what we wanted, mm -hmm. you know. So. Yeah, that's hard because there's there's companies out there that are, um, you know, claim to be reef safe, but that term isn't regulated. So, right. um, or you know, claim certain things and it, you know, maybe not necessarily what it says it is. Right. And you have to look at the ingredients of your product. And I know that I stand by my with integrity, and awesome. um, they come back and it shows. You know, yeah. the proof is in in the in the work. So. Well, thank you yeah. so much, Jenna. It's been really great having you here, sharing your experiences, and 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 doing you know sort of part of what you always want to do is is sharing all the benefits and things that you know you you've gone through so that yeah. other people can be successful as well. Um, so, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, this has been Adventures in Small Business. Uh, Thanks for watching, and also, you know, we have other episodes as well. They're all on thinktechhawaii.com, uh, and so thanks again for watching.